G'day everyone, it's Matt from Crank Engineering and we're here on day one of the Greg's Garage Welder Challenge, 30 day challenge and um, it's about 8pm on Monday night and it's bloody cold here in Melbourne, Australia, about 10 Celsius which is probably not that cold for you guys who uh, live in the snow. It's cold for us though and uh, it's pissing down rain as well so it's a lovely evening. But we're here to talk about this nine inch lathe and get started on the project for restoring it. So uh, generally on a project like this, I'd be much more inclined to spend a couple of weeks researching and finding technical manuals and stripped down instructions and things like that. Um, I'd do that with a motorcycle. I'd buy a manual for it, no matter what sort of bike it was. But in this case, is really limited information available. So considering I made the decision to you know, kick on with this project yesterday, I really haven't had time to do a lot of research. Um, again, because this is a clone of a South Bend lathe, there's quite a bit of info on the net, uh, on the forums for the guys who have a, a nine inch South Bend lathe. So um, I've come across a couple of resources. I'll put some links probably up here somewhere to the best site I found for South Bend info. And let's have a look at some of the things I've uh, been able to collect today that might help us out with the project. All right, so we're gonna tear it down straight off the stand and disassemble it on this bench here. And what I've been able to find today um, on that link I just uh, showed you is, this is a part of a US Army manual, parts manual, for a bunch of different South Bend lathes, so nine, uh, 10K and a 10 inch. Um, but the reason I really like this is because the quality of the drawings is is excellent. So. I can see very clearly what's going on in that assembly. I do have an original Hercus spare parts manual. Well, it might be a, it might be a copy because the quality, fifth edition seventy one, the quality of the um, of the images is really not all that great. It doesn't tell you how things go together. It just tells you what all the parts are. So I'm going to have to use these two manuals or uh, this US Army manual and the original parts manual to help me understand how all this goes back together and how to ID the parts and make sure I put them all back in again. So that's the parts info. Um, I did come across one uh, site if you ever haven't looked at it, uh, lathes.co.uk has got a plethora of information about machine tools and linked off their Hercus page is this quite extensive um, uh, right up about a rebuild of a of a nine inch Hercus, um, especially the apron itself. Uh, um, so I'm going to use that because that's same as my model. Um, I've got a couple of other bits and pieces around. This is just basically a sales brochure, Hercus brochure, sales brochure. It really doesn't tell me very much. And these three books, um, this is the probably the gold standard, the How to Run a Lathe by the South Bend Lathe Works. So I got this off eBay somewhere or Amazon or something, I don't know. It's um, the one that everyone refers to generally. Um, funnily enough, Hercus have got something very similar called the Textbook of Turning, which this is an original one as well. You can still get these on eBay. Um, just about word for word to the South Bend one. And here's another one, uh, the ME Lathe Manual, which is an English one. And what a coincidence, it's almost the same as well. So these have got some great info about running a lathe, but um, not very much on maintaining or restoring or rebuilding. So if I had more time, I'd probably do a lot more research, but we're gonna to have to wing it a little bit. Now, you know, this isn't the space shuttle. This is a, an old uh, manual lathe. So as long as I don't break anything or, you know, miss parts that, you know, like pins that I need to punch out before I pull things apart, we should be okay. So I'm gonna be looking at the uh, South Bend info on the forums if I get stuck and I'll highlight that to you guys as we go across it. So we need a bit of a system if we're gonna pull this thing apart. So I'm gonna use the old punch the parts through the cardboard method. Um, I've also got tons of these little you know, Ziploc bags which I can use to at least catch the parts, the small parts like nuts and bolts and things. And I'll just mark on there what they are and I'll even just tape that to the board so I know what I've got. So um, enough blabbing from me. I'm gonna clamp this phone to the light up here and probably high speed the video because you guys don't wanna see boring stuff like me undoing nuts and bolts. So we'll do it pretty quickly just to give you an idea what's going on. All 
All right, we're making some progress. Um, Got to get the chuck off. Now I need to do this before I pull this apart. So um, the way I do it, I don't know if this is the only way, but the way I do it is I engage the back gear and it locks up the drive. Now the pin's still in in the bull gear, I think that's called. So this whole drive's now locked up. So I can now wrench on the chuck. I'm just going to put a bit of timber underneath in case it comes flying off. And just got a cheap bit of um, tube out of my scrap bin. I don't even know whether I did that or someone else did. Um, I don't use anything really hard like a breaker bar or anything in here because this is hardened. And if I want anything to get damaged, I want this piece of crap tube to get damaged. I don't want to damage my chuck. So um, again, there's probably a million ways to do this, but um, I just load it up and there you go. Just crack it loose. So I can do all that with one hand, but um, I'll put that uh, phone down and spin this chuck off. All right, that's about all I'm going to get to tonight. I've been out here about an hour and a sort of hour and a quarter, and taking off a lot of the easy stuff. So nothing too difficult here, and I've just started laying out all the small parts here and all the larger parts on this bench. So I've been trying to keep you know these sub assemblies together for now and I'll tear them down individually later on and um, give them a clean up um, as an assembly just to try and minimize losing parts or forgetting which bit goes with what. So uh, that'll be it and let's get back to it tomorrow. I'll go and edit some video and post this up and uh, that's day one done. Thanks for watching. Uh, one postscript is um, don't buy a 16 gig iPhone if you're going to be shooting YouTube video because uh, they don't last very long. So I'm actually using my work phone to shoot this part of the video. I'm going to blend the videos later on. So I think I'm going to have to go back to my original cameras, um, my um, video cameras because there's just not enough memory space on these stupid iPhones. So um, anyway, lesson for um, new players. Cheers.